Hello and welcome. This is Chief Juno. Welcome to our continuation of the topic of metals and forward. This is our lesson number six. So in this lesson we are discussing extraction of lead. Then when we finish lead, we are going also the same same lesson. We are also going to discuss the extraction of copper. So lead, the chief ore, is galena symbol like sulfide. Impurities found in galena, silica. Other oils of lead, they are cerusite, which is like carbonate, and anglicite, which is lead sulfate. Extraction process. There are a number of steps that are involved. Six main steps. So one is the oil is ground. So after mining, the oil is ground into uh, mining, then removing the earthy materials. The oil is then ground into powder and then it is concentrated by flotation. Step two, it involves conversion of lead sulfide into lead oxide and this is done by roasting it in air. So lead sulfide burns in oxygen to form lead oxide and sulfur uh, form oxide gas. Step three, reduction of lead oxide to lead metal with a blast furnace. So just if, uh, if you have not watched lesson 4, please review and uh, go to lesson 4, you will see the blast furnace where we have the uh, extraction of iron being reduced with the blast furnace. So the same same way iron is reduced, so the same way we are going to have lead reduced. So the blast furnace, so the materials that will be placed in the blast furnace so we we'll have lead oxide one, coke two, and then limestone three. So these are the raw materials that will be placed in the blast furnace. So in the blast furnace, coke is going to react uh, with oxygen to form carbon four oxide. Carbon four oxide is going to be reduced to carbon two oxide. So some of Coke, which is carbon, will reduce lead to lead metal, while carbon is oxidized to carbon oxide. And then carbon two oxide form is a reducing agent, the main reducing agent, to reduce lead, lead oxide or lead two oxide to lead metal, while carbon two oxide is oxidized to carbon four oxide. Then step four, iron is added in the blast furnace, so we will have the fourth material into the blast furnace iron so it can be added together with this will have one two three four materials into the blast furnace and the function of iron is to reduce any lead sulfide so which will, might not have been oxidized here so it will be uh, reduced by iron to lead metal while iron will be oxidized to iron to sulfide then step five we have calcium oxide, so which is from the limestone, so from limestone, combines with silica. So remember we say silica is the impurity, so it was in Galena. So this is how silica impurity is, is removed as calcium silicate. So this is what we call calcium silicate. So then take note. This iron formed here, iron 2 sulfide and the silicate combine to form slag, which is tapped off. Then the last step, step 6, is purification. Purification of impure lead. So the impure lead is purified. There are two ways of doing that, either by oxidation process which again is similar to that of iron. So extraction of lead is very close to the extraction of iron. We saw that iron is purified by oxidation process. Lead is also purified by the oxidation process, same method, in which oxygen is bubbled through molten impure lead, where the impurities are oxidized into compounds which are less denser than lead. Then the impurities are, are skimmed off the other method you can also purify lead is by electrolysis method. So you set up your electrolysis as shown here. 
whereby you have the pure lead as the anode and the pure lead as the cathode, the electrolyte means the two nitrate solution. So during the electrolysis, lead ions from the solution will gain electrons and are deposited. So as the process continues, let me in fact change this one to red so that you see what's going to happen, the transfer of so this is the impure lead. So it will so the lead ions from the solution will be deposited here on the pure lead rod. So from the solution they keep coming to this one, to the cathode, so at the cathode that's where they increase in mass. While this one the, the lead block, the impure lead block, the lead ions will, uh, the lead atoms will lose electrons, they go into the solution to replace the lead ions that are coming out of the solution. So with the time, you are going to have this one, which is going to reduce in size. So you are going to have your lead block going into solution. So with the time, it is going to remain very small and then um, Anything that is not lead. So, this we call it sludge or sediments. They will fall off. They will not dissolve into the solution. So, this we call it sludge or sediments. So, they will fall to the bottom. While at the cathode, there is going to be addition of more and more. So the lead that is added here is very pure. So this is pure lead. So it will be added. So by the end of electrolysis process, then you are going to have more lead added to this side. And this is how purification is done. While this one reduces inside, the anode reduces inside. In size, it dissolves going to the solution, and the anode and the cathode there will be addition of lead as the ions from the solution gain electrons and are deposited as lead solid. So these are the respective equations, the equations for the reaction and the anode. The lead block, which is impure, so the ions go into, the atoms go into solution by forming ions and losing two electrons. The two electrons are gained by the ions of the solution that are deposited on the uh, cathode as lead solid, so this will be pure lead. And this is how purification process is done. And in short, that will be the extraction of lead. Uh, you can uh, refer to the notes for more explanation. And then do as many revision questions as possible. With the metals, you need to revise a lot. The more you go through questions, you get flowchart summaries they are going to be of great help, but in short, this I'm, I'm highlighting the key areas. So the key areas will involve this part, the chief or the impurities. Sometimes you are told, apart from the chief or, mention any other or. So it is also important to master the ores. And then I have uh, analyzed this and tried to summarize it into point form. So the main steps involved will be added. That grammatically, I've said review uh, review the flowchart summary, uh, not flowchart, the extraction, the blast furnace for extraction of iron. Extraction of iron is very close, very similar to extraction of lead. So up next, let's discuss extraction of copper. So our next metal is copper. The chief ore for copper is copper pyrex. Impurities found in copper pyrites are traces of silver and gold. The other ores of copper include copper uh, cuprite, charcoal site, malachite, we also have azurite, which is a basic copper to carbonate. Of copper. The 
the process of extraction of copper. So the ore is first ground in powder and then concentrated by fermentation, which we have just seen. The same thing happens for lead. The ore is then roasted in air. Also, this step was for lead, where the sulfide was roasted to obtain lead oxide. But this time for copper, cuprite is uh, roasted in air to get copper one, sulfide, iron two oxide, and sulfur four oxide. Step three, silica is added. Now, interestingly enough, silica has been an impurity in iron, aluminium, zinc, and lead. But here, silica is not an impurity. In fact, it is added into the ore. And the function here, or the main reason for adding silica, is to remove this one. So we see after oxidizing. So we need to do elimination. See, our interest is to get that. So the first one to be eliminated is going to be iron 2 oxide. This is where it is eliminated as so this will come out as slag. So this is iron 2 silicate. This compound is iron 2 silicate. Then now we go back here. See how many trees we saw. Sulfur 4 oxide will be treated as indicated here. So it should not be allowed the atmosphere being acidic. It can lead to formation of acid rain, which has so many adverse effects, both to plants and animals. Two, it also causes formation of, um, or it can lead to worsening of uh, respiratory illnesses. And then, um, now we are interested in this unit, our copper now from copper one sulfide. So copper one sulfide is then heated in regulated supply of air where it is partially oxidized to copper one oxide. So not the, the, the entire of copper one sulfide is not oxidized to, it is not entirely oxidized to copper one oxide, but rather part of it, so it is partially oxidized to copper one oxide. And then the copper one oxide that is the step five, copper one oxide that is formed then reacts with the remaining copper one sulfide to form copper metal. This copper metal form is impure copper and it is usually called blister copper. And the reason why it is called blister copper, because of the sulfur four oxide produced from some kind of um, pimples on top of the copper metal formed, so it is like acidic as pimples or blisters. That is why it is called blister copper. So sulfur oxide, you can see there are a lot of uh, reactions in which sulfur oxide is produced. In this reaction, sulfur oxide is produced, sulfur oxide is produced, sulfur oxide is produced. So in the extraction of metal, if there is a metal that produces a lot of sulfur oxide, then it will be copper. You can see even contains sulfur. Lead, remember, also contains sulfur. Zinc contains sulfur. So zinc, lead, and copper produces sulfur oxide. And such metals, if you are, uh, have found uh, location for the extraction, you can build contact process near a factory to manufacture sulfuric acid because you need sulfur oxide as uh, uh, the raw material there. So it can be used to manufacture sulfuric acid in contact process. Or if there isn't any factory to fill it with, you can scrub it, but don't allow it to go into the atmosphere because it is an environmental pollutant. It is a poisonous gas, so it is scrubbed. This process reacts sulfur oxide with calcium hydroxide. That process is called scrubbing, so it is scrubbed with calcium hydroxide to form um, a neutral salt. The last step in extraction of copper is purification of impure copper or the blister copper and it is purified by the electrolytic method. So you set up the, uh, your electrolytic cell as shown. So the electrolyte will be copper 2 sulfate solution and then make pure copper rod 
as the cathode connected to the negative terminal, while to the positive, that is the anode, you put your impure copper rod. So if this is the impure copper rod, then just like what we have seen with lead, the copper two ions in solution will gain electrons and they will be deposited here as atoms. So there is going to be an increase in mass at the cathode. So the cathode will increase in mass. So the mass will build up. So a brown solid will be formed in the cathode. And that is copper. So more copper ions, cut atoms will be formed or deposited in the anode. See, it will increase in mass, it will become large. And the, the copper that is being deposited here is pure copper. So here, the copper increases in mass, while the anode, the anode will decrease in mass. So this one is going to decrease. So by the end of the experiment, then you are going to have something like that. So you will find that the anode will have gone into the solution, so it will have decreased according to this reaction. So this is what you have now as the impure copper, and the copper blister. So it goes into the solution to replace the copper ions that are being discharged here as atoms. While at the cathode, the copper ions of the solution gain the electrons and then they are deposited here as copper solid. So you are going to have this one has increased in mass, that is the cathode. The cathode will increase in mass, while the anode is going to decrease in mass. Then any impurity that was in copper will fall down here. So this, the impurities there are to cause large. And in this case, it is going to be silver and gold. Now, this are precious metals. So these impurities can be fetched and then be sold to recover some of the costs incurred during the extraction process. So this is how purification process is done. And just to mention, there are some places where copper carbonate is find, found as a cheap ore. In case copper carbonate is um, uh, not the cheap, but I uh, will on large quantities. So where copper carbonate is used in the extraction of copper, first it is roasted in air. So you have copper carbonate. So the first step would be to roast it in air to form copper 2 oxide and carbon 4 oxide. Then the following process will take place, so it will be reduced induction by coke, or we say by carbon, and CO in the blast furnace. So this one, just as the case was for iron, so copper 2 oxide to react with carbon in the blast furnace to be reduced to copper metal. Then carbon is oxidized to carbon 2 oxide. Then some of it, some of it will be reduced by carbon 2 oxide gas. So copper will be reduced to copper metal while Carbon 2 oxide will be oxidized to carbon 4 oxide. So balancing the equation to then uh, this one is balanced like that. So then from there, this copper 2 is impure, then it will be purified by this. So where you have this, then this one you take it to the blast furnace, then while you will take the oil, so in the blast furnace, you will have the oil, which is copper 2 oxide, then add a coke, then you reduce it by coke. So here you might not need limestone because uh, you don't have silica impurities to remove them. So where copper 2 carbonate is 
found on large scale or where it is used in the extraction of copper, then this will be the process that will be followed. It's a reduction that is indeed decomposing to oxide, then the oxide will use it in the blast furnace. This reaction will take place. From there, so it will be step one, step two, and then if you come here, this will be step three, purification. Otherwise, where copper pirates is used, then follow the that process that I have just illustrated. And that will mark the end of um, lesson six, in which we have discussed extraction of copper and extraction of lead. So in next lesson, that will be lesson seven. In lesson seven, we will discuss properties of metals, physical properties, and chemical properties. So I wish you all the best. For those who are watching for the first time, please subscribe to view the other videos. All the candidates, I wish you all the best.